Welcome to PR After Hours, your twice weekly cocktail of business, PR, and marketing tips hosted by me, Alex Greenwood. Every week, we bring you virtual happy hours featuring business advice from entrepreneurs and leading thinkers in PR, marketing, and business. We're going to get started in just a moment, so stick with us. Hire old people. That was a tech job posting that came out earlier this year, and it was for a software developer role. And it said, We do not discriminate based on age, experience matters. We hire old people. Well, Fast Company first reported about a job posting for a software developer that was open to older workers, and it just went nuts, apparently. And according to Chris Cleveland, who is pushing 60, Um, who wrote this he was quoted on hacker news as saying i wrote the ad holy cow i didn't expect to be number one on hacker news he added i'm pushing 60 and i've attempted to interview for developer jobs over the last year i got nowhere despite 40 years of experience i'm getting really really tired of this industry's attitude toward people like me so in an effort to fight back he started a new group and he expects this thing is going to generate a lot more money than any work at facebook ever would so facebook did him a favor he says but it rankles still and it's not just tech. I'm telling you, there is a invisible line. I can't prove it, of course, but there seems to be a lot of anecdotal evidence going in that direction that there is this invisible line where if you were beyond a certain age, you are just not even going to get to square one. I'm talking about you can have the greatest credentials ever and you're not even going to get an interview. And I got so concerned about this after I read about this person and also some anecdotal things I've heard from friends who are looking for work and even some things in my own experience recently where I've been moved to look into working for some really great uh, jobs that I must say I was ideally suited for in so many ways and not even getting to the interview stage. It's kind of just, just disheartening. So I thought, well, I can't blame all that on the whole world. I got to blame it on me, I guess. Maybe I just wasn't a good fit. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, based on my experience plus the experience of other people perhaps there is something there so i thought well let's go to linkedin and let's do a poll and see what people think about this so i did that um a few days ago it's not even closed yet we've had 90 votes on this thing Um, there's still a few days left on the poll but i i just had to share with you what i've received so far on it and so here's how the poll read and it's on my news feed on linkedin And it's real easy to find me. Just uh, search Alex Greenwood on LinkedIn and you'll find me. Uh, I'll try and remember, put a show notes link in there for you if you want to connect there and check out this poll. But the question was for the over 50s. I I thought not the 40s, but let's go for the over 50s. I said, for the over 50s in the job market, do you perceive or have you experienced ageism in hiring? And before I tell you the results of that, I'll just tell you what is ageism? What is age discrimination? Well, according to the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, age discrimination involves treating an applicant or employee less favorably because of his or her age. The Age Discrimination Employment Act, the ADEA, forbids age discrimination against people who are age 40 or older. It does not protect workers under the age of 40, although some states have laws that protect uh, protect younger workers from age discrimination. It is not illegal for an employer or other covered entity to favor an older worker over a younger one, even if both workers are age 40 or older. Discrimination can occur when the victim and the person who inflicted discrimination are both over 40. There's more on that. I'll put a link in the show notes for your U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. So back to back to my poll with 90 votes and probably there'll be more, I'm sure, before it closes. I gave the poll a week, but I, my gosh, in just less than three days, 90 votes, which is pretty good for one of my polls. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of uh, participation. Again, the question was, for the over 50s in the job market, do you perceive or have you experienced ageism in hiring? Okay, the answers were yes, I have seen it firsthand, no, and I have my suspicions. I thought, "Hmm," because frankly, I have my suspicions. I'm leaning towards it. Um, So here's the results at this recording date on September 16, 2021. Yes, I have seen it firsthand. 61%, a full 61% said they have seen it firsthand. 8% said no. And 31% said I have my suspicions. So a full 92% have seen it 
or believe they have seen it, or at least they're suspicious about it. That is huge. Well, I wanted to share with you, and by the way, this thing's had like 4,600 views, this post, that's crazy. But I wanted to share with you some comments. Uh, here's a few, this is from Julia uh, R. And if you go, you can see more about the Julia, she's a colleague of mine. She says, Alex, I think it can be brutal in certain fields, such as advertising. Companies can succumb to the lure of new marketing ideas in the form of younger, more energetic folks and forget that a veteran brings a wealth of experience born from lots of trial and error. But if I felt I was a victim of ageism, I'd ask myself if first, is that a company I really want to work for if they value the shiny new toy over experience? That's a great point. And second, I'd ask myself, what makes me look old to an employer? And I'm not talking physical looks. Are my ideas stale? Is my approach commonplace and without innovation? Is ageism a problem? Yes, but it's a problem on both sides of the table. And uh, Julia, very, very tough love there. Very good. And I responded to her, those were excellent points. And I said, but the thing I cannot square is I hear from folks who cannot even get an interview for positions they are immensely qualified. Of course, there are only so many jobs to go around, but I wonder if the obvious tells of experience level, education dates, et cetera, aren't part of the decision to screen out older folks. And Julia responds, you have a good point, but the obvious tells of experience also suggest a higher salary will be required. Not saying it's right, but when you can hire two people instead of one, that's seductive. Until you do it, of course, and realize the management required to make that engine work. And I agree, it's so true. Uh, another colleague said, uh, um, uh, I just turned 40 and I've already started experiencing it, meaning ageism. Companies who focus on hiring mostly Fresh grads at low pay rate, despite rapid turnover, are guilty of ageism and are abundant. And he said, I've heard it straight from the mouths of hiring managers at advertising firms. Wow. Wow. And I said, that's what I said to him. I said to Matt, uh, wow, what a shame. Older people, not all, but I suspect most, have so much positive value for an organization. They're really missing out. Um, another commenter said, I just found out today that my position is being eliminated, even though I have been in the top sales results, helping build this company for at least the last four years. Sales are down and they are changing to a non-remote centralized model. I am sad, of course. In the past, I was definitely passed over due to my age. And now that I must enter the job market, I'm concerned for this. Tips are appreciated. Um, Sam responds, for what it's worth, I think it is very short-sighted to simply let go of older workers as normally they have a pretty good understanding of the business. I would guess it depends on the industry though. And with the current very heavy obsession with tech, and this person says he's talking from um, uh, Singapore area, in Asia anyway, maybe employees, employers, excuse me, think that younger ones will be better able to, to promote their business. Unfortunately, I will also speculate that companies and governments would like everything online and do away with people altogether. We run operations in Singapore and the government came out with all sorts of training programs, but very heavily geared to the online ecosystem with grants that offer introductory programs to all the big online tech company sales programs. Very little in the way of retraining an existing 50 year old engineer to compete in the new normal. You can probably detect the cynicism, he says. He said, my company actively looks for people who have been around the block and willing to learn new things. I hope that I have made the right call. By the way, I am over the half century myself, but still strong enough to lift a large glass of beer. LOL. Thank you. Cheers to you, Sam, with your Australasian trading Asia. Uh, another colleague. Yes, I have. Some were very blatant. Just the general question. And, and then there's uh, some have put uh, some links to other articles, but this is just fascinating. The response levels, again, a full 92% of respondents out of 90 votes, 92% of them said they have seen Asia, or excuse me, they've seen ageism firsthand or they suspicion it has happened, can't prove it. Um, and, and a mere 8% say no, definitely no, never seen it. Interesting, very interesting. I look at this uh, story that I began with where Fast Company was looking at ageism, and uh, there was there's some interesting comments here. You know, age discrimination discrimination in the jobs market, which is supposedly illegal, goes up in recessions. Some employers take the opportunity to axe experienced workers who are paid a reasonable wage and replace them with cheap, desperate kids who will put up with anything. And that was from Brett Ahrens, an award-winning financial writer. He further cites research from the National Bureau of Economic Research that found, quote, age discrimination rises hand in hand with the unemployment rate, unquote. Older workers tend to be the last hired and the first fired. There's a trend which started prior to COVID-19 that has picked up momentum during the pandemic. People who are in their mid to late 30s and older appear to be victim of age biases. 
it's not just due to chronological age. Compensation comes into play. Seasoned employees tend to earn more money than their younger cohorts. In a belt tightening environment, companies desire to cut costs and save money. It's expedient to achieve this goal by letting go of a 55 year old and hiring a person in their 20s or early 30s who would be paid significantly less. I've seen this, a friend of mine uh, was a um, very high performer, did a great job. COVID came, they were small-ish companies. They started some furloughs. They kept him on until the end of the year on furloughs and then they just let him go. And they offloaded a lot of his job duties to a couple other people on staff. Uh, I told him to keep an eye on that, that they're likely going to hire a replacement for him eventually. And it'll be a very young, less experienced and less, I won't say less talented, but in my opinion, probably because he's a very talented person. So you could see a lot of these things going on here. And, you know, the thing about ageism, it seems a lot like that old uh, Potter Stewart uh, Supreme Court quote about pornography. I, you know, I, I, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. I wonder that maybe there's a lot of ageism going on that we can't put our finger on and quite prove it, but we kind of know it when we see it. I, again, don't know. And by the way, I understand companies that have to make tough choices to survive. I certainly do. I have been in my career, my 30 year career so far, I've been laid off a couple of times and it was by companies that either made it, uh, acquisitions and went a different direction or they were just in you know recession. I understand all of that. But the thing I'd like to put out there to employers is, you know, you might really want to consider some employees uh, for new positions who people who've been around the block. Certainly they're set in their ways to a degree and certainly they may not be the bright, shiny new thing, but sometimes the bright, shiny new thing could actually be a little gray hair at the temples. There's going to be plenty more information and links in the show notes at prafterhours.com. I'd like to know what you think about ageism in the workplace it's so easy to click on the link and leave me a voicemail and tell us your experiences you could just leave your first name and the city you're in and just talk about your experience if you don't care to be recorded feel free to uh, get in touch with me through prafterhours.com just go down scroll to the contact sheet and put your uh, your message in there and i'll be happy to read it on an upcoming show all right then i hope you haven't gotten gray hairs worrying about what's going to happen in the job market all i can tell you is do the best you can and uh, you know if if something goes wrong and if ageism rears its ugly head uh, i just hope that you will do what we all have to do which is be as resilient as possible be as open as possible to learning new things adopting new ways of doing things that can channel your experience and talent and perhaps you can be the next superstar no matter what age you are in your workplace Okay, who has a podcast then writes an ebook about podcasting and doesn't do an audiobook version of it? Well, not me. I've done that. In fact, I'm very excited to tell you, dear listeners, that the podcast option, my recent top selling ebook on podcasting, my journey through 15 years as a podcaster, broadcaster, host, guest, and observer, is now an audible audiobook. It's really, really, really exciting for me to be able to present this to you through Audible, uh, which is available on Amazon.com, where the ebook link is as well. And in this fast listen, my experience uh, comes to you through stories, practical tips and advice from my hundreds of hours as a guest, producer, podcast host, and more. And the podcast option, if I say so myself, is mandatory listening for those new to podcasting. And it should be a welcome addition to Veteran Podcasters Library. So check out the podcast option read by yours truly, Alex Greenwood, or as they say there, the J. Alexander Greenwood, because that's my pen name. And that's a long story, which if you dig through my podcast, eventually you'll find out what that means. But the point being today, the podcast option is available now as an audible audiobook. I've got a link in the show notes to make it easy for you. Please do me a favor, go get that audiobook. Or if audiobooks aren't your bag, there's also a link for you to get it as an ebook. Again, the podcast option. I certainly hope you will choose it. Oh, you know what that means? Looks like it's last call here at your virtual lounge for PR news views and interviews. Don't forget, you can ask me a question anytime. You can do it through our Twitter account, which is at ours PR, or 
Even better, you can send me a message vocally. I would love to hear your voice, and I'll answer it on the show. There's a link in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up through Anchor FM. It's free, doesn't take long, and you record your message. I get the message. I will play your audio. Just give me your first name and the city you live in, and then I will answer the question to the best of my ability right here on the show. Don't forget to, if you're enjoying this podcast, you can support it and help increase the frequency and value of the show. Just consider being a sponsor for your brand or your agency or just yourself because you're like, I like this show. Or just drop a few coins in the virtual tip jar. Either way, there's links in the show notes. Please check that out. All of that, of course, being in the show notes where you're listening right now or at PRAfterHours.com. I see that they're turning up the lights. Last call is over and I've got to clean up this virtual lounge. And until next time, I'm Alex Greenwood and you've been listening to PR After Hours on Anchor FM.